Do you have time to give us your take on the Federal Reserve? <laughs> <laughs> sure, my take on the Federal Reserve is very short and sweet. <laughs> Look, the Federal Reserve is just an example of a government monopoly. It's a monopoly over money. Uh, there's nothing the Federal Reserve does that the free market couldn't do. It's just like the post office. And it's run about as effectively as the post office. The difference is that if the post office screws up, then people might lose their mail. Not big a deal. When the Fed screws up, we all suffer. We all go down. And the Fed screws up all the time. It has to. And this is my quick, uh, my quick uh, analysis of what. We all know that price controls, oh, anybody who studied economics knows that price controls don't work. I mean, even, again, Krugman knows price controls. Yeah. I mean, you remember Nixon tried them? You remember he, he, he closed yeah. all prices? I mean, it doesn't work. What happens when you, when you set prices, when a bureaucrat set prices? This is Economics 101 that's been known for a very long time. How do, how do prices get established in the marketplace? Supply and demand, right? And, how, and where does supply and demand come from? From millions of choices that we all make. When a bureaucrat tries to set a price, where does that price come from? His head. Not, not the millions of choices. He doesn't know what people will choose. So he can't predict what supply and demand would be. So any price the bureaucrat will set will be wrong. I mean, he might get lucky and set it right, but it would be wrong. It won't be the point where supply and demand matches. So he might set it too high. If he sets, let's say, the price of bread too high, what happens? No, people eat less bread. No, what happens? Something happens. Bread. Everybody wants to bake bread. Nobody wants to buy it. Supply and demand don't match. You get what? You get surplus of bread. And you have to trash it all. You have to throw it all away. That's the reality. That's what... If he sets it too low, what happens? <coughs> Nobody wants to make bread. Everybody wants to buy it. What happens? Shortages. Lines. Now, if you're a bureaucrat, where are you more likely to set a price? Too low or too high? <laughs> too low. No, too low. Because you, you want people to think you're nice. You want to lower prices. Right? Wherever the prices controls in the world, China, uh, Iran, where they're always set too low. And they're always shortages. Soviet Union, always shortages. And the shortage is not because the market failed. The shortage is just you set it too low so nobody wants to produce it because there's not enough profit. Everybody wants to buy it because it's so cheap. So you run out very quickly. Right? What, is, what is the price the Federal Reserve sets? Interest rates. Interest, Interest rates. rates. How does it decide what the interest rate should be? <laughs> How does it decide? What is an interest rate in the free market? What is the supply and demand? Whose supply and demand would we? Like bread is the people who want to eat bread and the people who make bread. What would be the supply and demand for interest rate? Borrowers and lenders. Borrowers and lenders. So what price do I want to lend my money? And to what price does somebody else want to borrow money? And the supply and demand, just like any other product in the, in the economy, would match at a certain price, which is the interest rate. That's all interest rate is the price. Now the Federal Reserve comes in, and it says, no, we're going to determine this price. We're going to control this price. And guess what happens? It gets it wrong. It gets it wrong. And when it gets too low, what happens? Nobody wants to lend, but everybody wants to borrow. Now, the gut, now the, this is a trick. The Federal Reserve has one on top of that. It can produce its own money. So it's not dependent on the people who want to lend. Because it prints money. It forces them, in a sense, to lend. So then what happens? What happens if you lower interest rates to zero? Everybody wants to borrow. I want to borrow money at zero. Who doesn't want to borrow money at zero? It would be ridiculous not to borrow money at zero. Because <laughs> then I could put it in something, get a return, pay off, and I make a profit. So what happens when interest rates are very, very low? Everybody borrows. You remember what interest rates were in 2002? What's that? 2002. They were 1%. You know what inflation was in 2002? 3%. When you set interest rates below the rate of inflation, you're basically setting interest rates at a negative real rate. Guess what people do when you're basically paying them to borrow money? That's what a negative real rate means. They borrow money. We all borrowed money. We got mortgages. We took out car loans. We 
Banks that are credit cards. We all bought. You see per capita debt ratios in America. They went like this. Of course they did. Because they priced it low. Demand was infinite and you keep supplying the money, so everybody bought money. The key to the financial crisis, the reason the financial crisis happened, is the low interest rates in 2002 and 2003. Why did they all go into housing? Because of American housing policy. Because of Freddie and Fannie and the Federal Home Loan Bank and the interest deductibility of your mortgage payments and all of that which funneled the money into housing. So housing went up. But the key was the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve always messes up. And then they tried to fix it in 07, right? And they started raising interest rates to suck the money back in. And what happened? They raised them too high. And suddenly, we couldn't afford our variable rate mortgages that we took in the good time. And we started defaulting. And that was the trigger that triggered the financial crisis. But it's the Federal Reserve. And right now, we are interest rate. Zero. Zero. A low 1%. What is inflation? 2 to 3%. <clears throat> Something bad is going to happen financially. A financial crisis is in our future because of what the Fed is doing right now. We just don't know where and when it's going to happen. The Federal Reserve does not exist. These things should be controlled by the market. There's absolutely no, the only reason the Federal Reserve exists, this, this is the paradox, but this is where it comes to ethics. What happened before there was a Federal Reserve? The markets, the gold the markets determined this. There was a gold standard. I mean, the government intervened, but no idea like they do with the Federal Reserve. But like, who had a lot of power? J.P. Morgan. JP Morgan. Bankers did. Right, so bankers, individual bankers, particularly J.P. Morgan, had a lot of power. So, uh, and he was brought in 1907, there was a huge financial crisis, and J.P. Morgan got basically all the bankers into a room and they negotiated a deal. He saved the country, literally saved the country from disaster uh, in 1907. So how do we reward him? We reward him by dragging him in front of Congress and beating him up as an evil capitalist who was, who was you know, exploiting his customers and who had too much economic power. And that was in 1913, there were famous hearings in front of Congress, and he was called names and so on. And uh, so we decided that we didn't like the fact that J.P. Morgan had so much power, so we were going to create a Federal Reserve to take power away from J.P. Morgan. Now, why didn't we trust J.P. Morgan's power? Because it was to serve whose interest? J.P. Morgan. We don't trust self-interest. We don't trust the problem. So instead, we created a bank 10 times more powerful than J.P. Morgan, 10 times more powerful than any bank in the world. We call it the Federal Reserve, we put Alan Greenspan at the top, and we trust him. <laughs> now why do we trust him? We do trust him, we trust him much more than J.P. Morgan. Well, Obama says he, which, he eliminated the middleman. Well, we'll get the middleman in a second. <laughs> but why do, we trust, why do we trust Bernanke and Greenspan and we don't trust J.P. Morgan? No, no. Because they're in it for the public good. Oh, right. They don't get a bonus, they're not driven by the profit motive, they're not self-interested. They no of course, they have no accountability, and they again they screw up and they destroy the economy. J.P. Morgan could not have destroyed the economy. The Federal Reserve can. We had inflation in the '70s. Some of us were alive back then, right? It was awful. The '70s were a bad time. Who caused the inflation of the '70s? The Federal Reserve. You can't have inflation without a Federal Reserve. Who caused the Great Depression? We know today who caused the Great Depression. This is not controversial. The Fed did. So, there shouldn't be a Federal Reserve. That was my short answer.